When I stand accused by my regrets And the devil roars his empty threat I will preach the gospel to myself That I am not a man come dead For Jesus Christ is my defense And my sin is nailed to the cross My soul is healed by the scars The weight of guilt I bear no more Doubt and shame hang over me Like the arrows of the enemy I will run again to Calvary That rugged hill of hell's defeat My fortress set, my victory My sin is nailed to the cross My soul is sealed by the scar the weight of guilt I bear no more Praise the Lord, praise the Lord My sin is nailed to the cross My soul is healed by the scars Now I'm alive forevermore Praise the Lord, praise the Lord I will worship Him with holy hands And raise the song that never ends Of Jesus Christ, my righteousness And my sin is nailed to the cross My soul is sealed by the stars The weight of guilt I bear no more Thank you so much for joining us this evening for our Tenebrae service. We do this each year on Good Friday to recognize the great work of Jesus Christ for us. It's fitting during this time to, to let ourselves experience the emotions of, of loss and grief and death. We do this so that we can remember the weight of our sin, what it actually cost our God to, to make a way for us. This entire week, we've been thinking about these things, the events leading up to the death of Jesus Christ. And we're gonna continue that tonight. We're gonna sing some songs. We're gonna read some scriptures that take us through the story of his last days. So as we do that, walk with us through this. Let yourself feel the grief and the weight of sin. And let's repent of that together. Let's confess. Let us look upon our God. Behold the one who has set us free and given us life. Let us remember Jesus, 
who though rich became poor and dwelt among us, who was mighty indeed, healing the sick and the troubled, who as a teacher to his disciples was their companion and servant. May we ever be grateful for Jesus the Christ and what he has done for us. Let us remember Jesus who prayed for the forgiveness of those who rejected him and for the perfecting of those who received him, who loved all people and prayed for them even if they denied and rejected him, who hated sin because he knew the cost of pride and selfishness, of cruelty and hatred, both to people and to God. May we ever be grateful for Jesus the Christ and what he has done for us. Let us remember Jesus who humbled himself, obedient unto the cross. God has exalted him who has redeemed us from the bondage of sin and given us new freedom. May we ever be grateful to Jesus the Christ and what he has done for us and continues to do for us. Today, the carpenter's hands are nailed to a cross. The King of Kings is crowned with thorns and wears the purple robe of mockery. Today, he sets us free, himself imprisoned on a tree. Today is God's Friday. We come and worship. Sweet name, nothing can separate us. 
O crucified Jesus, Son of the Father, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, eternal Word of God, we worship you. O crucified Jesus, holy temple of God, dwelling place of the Most High, gate of heaven, burning flame of love, we worship you. O crucified Jesus, sanctuary of justice and love, full of kindness, source of all faithfulness, we worship you. O crucified Jesus, ruler of every heart, in you are the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In you dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. We worship you. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Grant us peace. Almighty God, look with mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross. Through him who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
kindness he lavished on us His blood was the payment His life was the cause We stood neath in debt We could never afford And our sins they are men His mercy is Tonight we'll be walking through the various scenes and episodes leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus. We begin our journey through the scriptures by looking first at what is commonly referred to as the upper room, the time when Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper as a new covenant for his disciples. As we prepare for this time, I would encourage you to prepare your heart and your soul to go before the Lord. I'll give you a moment to do so and then pray for us as we begin our scripture reading together. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to turn our attention to the significance of Jesus' death for us. We thank you for your word that is true, that rings through amidst all the chaos and uncertainties in life and remind, reminds us of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. We thank you for the blood that he shed on our behalf on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that, that you give us this space to be reminded of that such that it shapes our hearts and our lives. Lord, deepen our faith now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples. He said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks to it, he gave it to them. And he said, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom.
Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this, their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, what further witness do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, you also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went away into the gateway and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again and began to say to bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. 
So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priest have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, you will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin." From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, 
one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Ha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God.
He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Since it was a day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with them. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness, his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled, not one of his bones will be broken. 
and again another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. And so because of the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. What riches of kindness he lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cause. We stood neither debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. 